and we are back. Heart Talk episode 9 featuring Donna Goro and Tan Brown. So sorry about that. Wi-Fi issues. We will not have any other issues now. And we will just wait for our guest of honor to come back in. Um, my sincere apologies. Hello, George. Hello, hello. So my dad unplugged the Wi-Fi, even though I told my family a million times that from six to seven today, I cannot be interrupted. Um, Don, I'm going to bring it right back to you. I apologize for that. We had a little Wi-Fi issue here. And we are back, a three in the house. Yes. <laughs> I, you know, one of the hazards of working from home, I came home for eating. Um, I told my family, like, yo, from six to seven on Thursday, I cannot be disturbed. And that's my, my time. You know, is real. So that's how my creation process has been. Back to you, so that's off. you were just explaining what the creation process has been like. For you yeah, um, I was um, saying that I I was planning to have another version of Punk Noir and, and Legos this summer, so that was gonna that was that would be really exciting. Um, but at the at the moment, it, things are just kind of you know just kind of up in the air. Like you know, I like I really don't see myself being at, like going there, you know, this summer or anything. So I, as I thought I would. You know, during this time, um, I've made a, made a few things. Um, you know, I did I sat and did some drawings that um, might be used for a show that in Seattle um, this fall. Um, and then I got a whole bunch of whole bunch of like canvas, like raw canvas and frames, and so I plan to build build some build some fresh canvases and start um, just churning out some stuff, just creating. You know, even though I don't really feel like it. You know. Um, and I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm going to, if I'll do another Punk Noir show or, but I, I'm really itching to do something, you know, something else, um, for the next show possibly. Mm. Yeah. I think the energy shifted. So it's really interesting how creatives are responding to that and how for some of us, it really is, I mean, it's kind of sit down and not really feel pushed to create, um, because we're not sure like what will happen with those pieces. Um, have you had the chance to bring your work to Nigeria before, or this would No, I, I haven't. Um, I it's I I visited there, um, and it's been you know it's been years since I've been there. But I was looking forward to possibly going back um, and just seeing what yeah what that response would be um, there. Yeah, yeah. I I'm definitely really curious because I don't know. Uh, you know, I obviously don't know much about Nigeria. Um, do you, how do you find people from, from the culture, from the country you respond, particularly the punk noir series? Have you gotten responses or did you anticipate getting a response? From people, from people in Nigeria? Yeah. Um, there, there is, um, there's a gallery that reached out to me called um, Umenka Gallery and the owner, I guess, just saw my work um, online and he, he thought that he said that um, it would be received, you know, well there. Um, but, but yeah, that's I'm looking forward to going there to Nigeria, um, you know, Lagos and taking some photos of, taking some photos of people there as reference. I know that they have, they're, they're like punks there, you know, in um, you know, Nigeria too. So it would have been, it would be cool to go there and kind of hang out with them and take some photos and maybe, you know, paint portraits of, of them as well. Yeah. I mean, I, it will happen. I'm looking forward to when it can. Happen. Um, can yeah, I think happen. eventually. <laughs> I mean, I'll be watching. <laughs> um, well, that being said, you know, part of your process, that being said, part of your, what process, that? part of your process, what I've noticed is that you, photograph your subjects and then paint them. Is that your normal process? Can you walk through when you are creating a piece around a figure, um, what that looks like with the subject? Yeah, so I like to, you know, as you can see, I like to paint people. Um, so for me, because I like to have the figure, because from the process for me to make the figure look somewhat realistic is I need to, I need to see I need to see a person um, 
so when I paint, sometimes it, it's like, it's the painting is of a specific person and, um, you know, so I need, I need to have them in the studio so that I can get, get capture their image to um, use it as a reference to tell their story. And then other, other times the, the painting may not, may not be of a specific person, but I, mean, I still need, you know, to look at a body, you know, just as, as reference, just to see, you know, just how a body um, moves. But, but yeah, I'll um, have a person come to my studio um, you know, we'll discuss what they wear. Lately, like for Punk Noir, um, I just tell them wear whatever you want, mm -hmm. and then I just take take some photos and um, you know go back and use those as reference uh, for the portrait. Yeah, and Noir, I think like you were very intentional about people you ask. I wouldn't say model to be your inspiration, and in particular, there was a lot of creatives. Um, why was that important to you? to find people who are also creating this series? Um, for me, when I did, especially when I, well, when I did um, Punk Noir, um, I knew that I just wanted, and this is the first time I showed it was in Austin, so I knew, um, well, that was like the, the biggest scale show that I had had, you know, at that time, and so I knew I wanted to, to really um, capture, 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 like, capture what I treasure a lot, you know, with, within the city, you know, within Austin. So um, it was kind of natural for me to find um, other creatives because that's what mostly what, what I was, what I was surrounded by. So, and so I just felt very inspired by, um, you know, the other type, the other artists that I was um, surrounded by. So I was, you know, musicians, um, writers, uh, jewelry makers. Um, and so, yeah, it just kind of, this kind of, it was kind of like a an, an ode an ode to all these you know all these other creatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you consider yourself punk or ins I mean inspired by punk? But do you consider yourself punk? It cut it cut out a little bit. Do I consider myself what? Punk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> punk. Um, means? That's a good question. I mean, I feel like you know, grow growing up, um, I was always interested in like in like and I enjoyed some elements of, of that culture but I didn't feel that I could really um claim that or fully you know embrace that especially like as a black girl um but then as I as time went on I realized okay well I can you know maybe I can um it's okay for me to you know, identify with you know with with parts of that so mm -hmm. so I guess I mean I, I would consider myself um yeah punk sure <laughs> I mean, Alaska's, I definitely, like, was attracted to the, to the culture when I was growing up as well. And so, like, I didn't see anyone of color. I was one of the very few South Asian people in my, in my high school. So mm -hmm. I was not just the, one of the only South Asian people, but also always wearing, like, black or always, mm -hmm. like, the certain types of music. And so, right. I, you know, I, we're definitely seeing that emerge more now. You know, yeah, yeah, it's a lot more accepted now. Accepted and almost like becoming trendy, like people. Yeah, mm -hmm. and That's I think why, I um, one of the paintings that I have for Punk Noir, it's a, it's like a big, it's like a, it's a like a magenta colored painting, and then in copper leaf, I, I wrote the letters um, C O O L, like cool yeah. at the top, and so that was just kind of, kind of saying that um, maybe years ago, like a black women may have kind of gotten, I don't know, like made fun of for enjoying and being being a part of the punk culture, but now with the emergence of like that like Afro punk and all of this and it's kind of considered like, you know, quote quote unquote quote cool, you know. So Exactly. Um and I guess that goes to perfectly in my next question, but do you ever portray yourself in your paintings? Myself? Um <laughs> yeah, so yeah, sometimes. Um the past few years, I've been focusing more on painting other people, but um, I but yeah, I've been doing some reference images of myself lately, just during you know during these times because it's like I, you know, I'm not able to get a model to come in, you know, and pose for me. So, so there'll probably probably be more um, self portraits coming, you know, in the next in the next few months. Honestly, so I'm going to be wow. doing more of that. Oh wow. That'll <laughs> That'll be really awesome to see. Um, as 
I think that's another thing is people are really ha having to go internal and find where else they can draw inspiration from. Yeah, it's true. Look at find inspiration, but sometimes see ourselves in that same light as as a as a muse or as a subject of a painting. I'm sure is pretty vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And the I mean, it's weird too because during this time, like one thing I have been doing a lot is baking. <laughs> Oh. And, so, and then eating everything I bake, and <laughs> so like you know, I gain gain a lot of weight, and so it's just weird to like sit and capture images of myself because I felt you know, I don't know, like a little self conscious of my body, and it just I don't know, it just it's just weird. Oh well, you look cool. Um, <laughs> Thanks. Well, I've been baking a lot too, and kind of the same thing. But one thing I've really seen is friends of mine who are it really hurts. They can't like go to their bar where their hair is starting do things and I think it's beautiful I like we're kind of you know obviously I want us all to be feel healthy and feel like mm -hmm. top shape but you know there's something to be said about kind of letting ourselves go a little yeah I don't know, that's that has been interesting people have been you know kind of getting creative with that <laughs> with their um, hair and everything so that's why I like these lives as well because it's raw. <laughs> like mm -hmm. there's no it, there's no finishing touches you know right um so you know you you mentioned in one of the pieces you are writing cool mm -hmm. over, and, you know i i had the pleasure of of getting to see some of these pieces in person but also i i went and looked through um your series over the years pull up the, those who are watching can kind of a little peek but mm -hmm. one thing i've noticed definitely have figurative skill you are able to portray realistic figures but then as this progress I start to see more streaks and writing on top you know I see more erasure come in um, in the later series and so can you tell us a bit about how you incorporate writing and abstraction like here's an example right when did that what does that mean um, and how are you how are you incorporating it yeah, like some of the paintings that, that just went by a few seconds ago, yeah, from my um, Misogynoir Resistance mm -hmm. series. And that's um, that's a series where I painted um, women while trying to make, make, try to make them, well, trying to have them come across as uh, like video models, like the, the girls, the dance and like the like hip hop music videos. And so at, at that time I was just thinking about just how how black women are thought of like in in media and, and in culture um and that's that that was just one of the ways that i saw one of the things that i saw a lot you know just growing up you know looking at mtv and music videos and, and i was thinking about how women are were just kind of um in the background just like props you know just there to shake and you know please please the man and and so um i wanted to find a way to to push to push back against that um and so I started doing the scratching out things um, um, because of inspiration from an artist named um, look at, let's say it, Gary Gary Simmons, who's like a Brooklyn-based artist, and so some of his work that he did in the early '90s, um, I don't know if he still does much of it, but he would draw on a chalkboard and then like smear out. Well, he would draw um, racial like racial caricatures on a chalkboard and then like smear it out um, with his hand. So that's what. I was trying to use a similar weight tactic to try to push back against um, uh, misogynoir. Um, so, so I started using like paint to scratch out part, parts of the women, sometimes like goldy. Um, and then eventually, like um, when I moved on to do my punk noir series, I also I used um, goldy to, and paint to smear out parts of people um, to show like just, just erasure and um, also just push, pushing back against um, things that, you know, that, that try to silence um, people. So, so that's awesome. what that's about. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, do you ever find that when you've done a whole figurative painting or about to add those smears, is there ever a part of you that's like, oh, like hard to let go because you have a whole figure and you're about to add this on top? You would think so, but I don't, um, yeah, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel that way at all. I just, when I do the, the mark, it just feels, you know, it just feels right and it just feels like I'm you know completing the the piece so so yeah yeah and you even incorporate it like the I love the way that you install your work you incorporate that even back to the 
the walls and around the pieces. Yeah. Which allows the whole exhibition to feel like an installation, feel uniform. Yeah, I just want people to feel like, you know, that they're, you know, transported and walking into this world and like just completely surrounded um, by these people. Uh, and like, so, you know, ideally, if I'm able to, I like to yeah, paint the background of the, the paint the wall the same color as the background of the painting to like expand the space um, that the that the people are in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember you do that because one thing that I, I think you do really well and that I've been finding inspiration from is how you use video content to share your process with your viewers. Mm -hmm. It's something you've been doing for, for years. Um, and I think your background as a, as a producer guides that. So can you tell us a bit about um, your use of video content and how is your practice? Um, yeah, like I... A few years ago, like I started, you know, just like, you know, like, like a lot of people started seeing people's like vlogs on YouTube and like, you know, it was just like, you know, the vlogs were like really, really simple and like it, but yet you feel like this drawn to certain people and you want to see like, oh, but what, you know, what are they up to? And it's, it's so interesting to see like, even the, mon the mundane things just, you know, about their life. And so, um, so a few years ago, I thought, okay, I'll, let me give it a try. You know, so I started off um, um, shooting, just shooting things that, that I was doing, like leading up to um, an art show. And, and I shot some video, like from a trip to New York and I interviewed some artists um, during the trip. Um, and then I shot a little bit of like, you know, my day job and just kind of showed people, you know, a little bit of what I do every day. And then, you know, just sat down and, edit it, it together, you know, as a web series. And, and from the from a little bit of feedback I've gotten, the people have said that they kind of enjoyed watching it. Um, so, but it's def definitely something that, you know, I want to continue doing. Like, I have like a ton of, ton of footage that's like not edited, <laughs> just sitting there right now. Well, now's the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> time. No, I love the series. Um, and, you know, this is, this is a new project thinking about how do you content and I think it's it's something we're going to see more of um so it, it was really I think I texted you the or I messaged you the other day and I was like I'm deep in a rabbit hole of Donna Coro <laughs> watching these videos and it, it works like a podcast like I was able to yeah. listen um so I really appreciated it um with that being said like you know you do all that on top of having a full-time day job how do you how do you balance or do you jump? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't balance it. Like something always suffers. So it, it's either you know, I'm not. I'm never doing enough of one thing. But that is something that I think can improve. It's just up to me. Up to me to like you know work work on that. Work on um, just um, how do I say? Just work. Just work on my schedule a bit better and stay more consistent. To what's on you know my calendar, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's best. That's always been that's always been um, challenging. Mm -hmm. I found um, some people that I know that are working still have their full time job working remotely. Find that they're working more hours now because yeah, it's in the same yeah. thing. Mm. Yeah, it's like it's it is weird because like you're just it feels like you're always available <laughs> or something, you know. Um, so. I'm still definitely, I'm not working um, many more hours, but I'm definitely working like yeah, just the regular, like, you know, 40 hours a week. And then so when I'm done with work, I'm still like mentally drained, you know, so. Word. Well, I would like to um, talk about color with you. Like even those of you who are watching and you're, you're looking at Dawn, like there's so many beautiful colors that you bring together and um, again, as I was looking through your series, I noticed like sometimes you'll really be gravitating towards a specific color and spend time on that. Um, in Punk Noir, you're bringing a lot of colors. So what what draws you to certain colors of certain time periods? And is there a color that you're finding yourself more drawn to now? Yeah, um, I just, well, part of, my, part of my inspiration for how I use color came from um, me, like, being a fan of Andy Warhol, like, you know, since I was in, in high school, and so I always thought, you know, when I made paintings, I want, you know, each, like, different ones to be 
a different color and they would all be together and kind of work, you know, work to, the colors would work together when, when the paintings are shown together. So, so that's why I um, usually do like the solid, a solid um, background color. Um, for the, for the black and yellow series, um, I was trying to be like just very co confrontational, like about just the, a, you know, black, um, black, I guess, I don't know, feminine body. Um, and so like the, I made, you know, the skin pretty much completely black and then the backgrounds yellow, um, just cause it's just the yellow just is sort of like a, to me, like, you know, being in Texas, it's like, you know, really sunny and so it's just like, it's just warm and it just really helps the, the black, um, the black pop. And then when I did um, like the punk noir stuff, like I really, I really just kind of went intuitively on that. Like, you know, I would just sit with, with each person's portrait and, and then, you know, just like, okay, this one is going to be this color. This one's going to be this color. And then, and then just kind of hope it all works out. And, and it did. And it turns out that there kind of, there was like a color, color scheme there when I did it, but I just didn't like define it, um, you know, before I went into it. Um, and so now I'm, I'm trying to be a, a little bit more like scientific <laughs> with, um, with how I use colors. I'm just cause that, because they can, um, you know, they can, how do I say, trigger certain things in the brain, just depending on, you know, on how they're used. Yeah. Oh, and as far as now, I think I'm more drawn to like muted, muted colors. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so we'll see <laughs> what I do with that. And you're talking about muted colors as you for like more portraiture? Yeah. Huh. That's really interesting. Um, I think that that because it's it's pretty much the opposite of the colors used in punk noir, which are vibrant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I want to do something a little a little bit a little bit different, but I'm not sure exactly what that's going to look like yet. I'm excited. Um, I'm very <laughs> excited. You said when you're looking at the portraits, you're kind of deciding color. Is that a feeling? Um, is it some? Is it color? Already see present in their portrait. Uh, what it's, draw it's, you? it's like a feeling, and also part of it's like by, based on like you know who I'm painting and, and maybe a bit like what like what they're wearing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I just, I'm able just to kind of sit and say, okay, this color is feels right for whoever you know, so and so, you know, for this painting. Well, what, what color do you think feels right for me? If, if <laughs> I would say like. Um, the work where you like, like, like a warm, a warm orange. <laughs> That's the first thing that, that comes to mind to me when I um, you know, see you. <laughs> That's that really actually that it's been, I would say, one of the colors I've been primarily during the pandemic has been like warm oranges and yellows. I've been making lots of math um, mm -hmm. for stickers and I've been doing them in neutrals, but when I'm not, I've been doing them in warm orange or, and maybe because it's hopeful. So maybe. That's a, I feel like you, you picked up on something there. Um, <laughs> maybe. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. The science of instinct is pretty strong, too. Um, so if it's working. Um, now, is there any advice you would give to um, an emerging artist, particularly around like you, how you capture your work and display it online? How I, like uh, you said, particularly like how I capture the work and, and display it. Mm -hmm. Or oh, your, particularly with how you use video content, like any advice you would give to those who are trying to figure out how to promote themselves digitally? I would say, um, it would, I, would, I would say, give it a try, like get, just give it a try and um, it may not be like that good, like when, when a person like starts off, and, but, that, but that's okay. Um, and I would say like the biggest thing is like to be whatever, um, you know, person wants to do to, or whatever person wants to present online to be consistent. That, and that's, that's where I messed up. <laughs> like not being consistent, but just, I mean, be consistent and you can build up, build up more of a community, you know, around your artwork. Awesome. Um, if anyone, you know, if you're tuning in and you have a question for Dawn, um, definitely feel free to drop any questions. I know there's some that there was a, we can scroll through, there was someone who said they would love to use your piece for a music video. Quote, quote, not quote, a fucking statement. Your pieces are so bold and nice. 
I believe you actually had work featured on TV. Yeah. Um, Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, um, like um, last fall, um, my paintings were on um, a show called First Wives Club that's, um, that's by um, BET, but they reached out to me like the year, the year before. And at that time, like it was um, going to be, the show was going to be on like a whole different network or something. And, um, but they said, yeah, I'm interested. And then, so I sent them um, at their request, like I sent them some JPEGs of, you know, some images that they could use and then, you know, just kind of discuss like all the contract stuff. And then I guess like a year went by and like, I just didn't, you know, really hear anything. And then, um, but then, you know, I guess it, it all worked out and the show ended up being on BET and stuff. So like someone reached out to me and said, hey, I saw, I saw your work on this show. I was like, oh, and then, and then I saw, I was like, okay, that, that's pretty cool. I got to see it there in the background. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's super cool. Um, I think that's really, really cool. Um, so I, we, do have a, we do have a question here. I'm curious, what kind of use for the shimmery, sparkly, bold stroke? What, the shimmery, wait, what is this? What? I, what are you talking about the shimmery bold strokes? The metallics. Oh, this is so clean and nice. Um, so I've been, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I've been using the copper, copper leaf, like cop, like copper foil sheets, mm -hmm. and then I use. Um, where is it? <laughs> and then I use um, this this metal. I don't know if this is adhesive metal. Uh, what is it called? Adhesive size, so it's just like a glue that I basically like a glue that you brush on where you want the metal to go, and then I just put it on there and let it sit for a little bit, and then just rub it, and then it it comes out, you know, pretty sharp. <laughs> and then paint in general, are, are there certain brands that you favor? Um, I. <laughs> I, I, I decided that I like, you know, I think I'm going to stick with acrylic paint um, that's best for me. And I use um, um, Liquitex a lot. Just, I mean, it's just so widely available and easy for me to get. And then I also use um, like, um, what do you call it? Like the paint, like latex paint that you buy like at Home Depot. Um, I use that mostly for my backgrounds these days because it, it's a lot more you know, cost effective, and you, you can get a lot more out of it. So, so yes, yeah, so that's what I use. Yeah, and, and your pieces are have been really large lately. Mm -hmm. Like like six foot by six foot. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you think that this, you know, as you start to go more into this muted series, that that's going to be large, small? Um. Probably um smaller. Definitely on the smaller end. Um. I love having the big paintings, but you know, they're hard, they're hard to sell because like people, most people don't have like six foot, <laughs> six feet of space in their house. Um, and so, you know, I have most of the paintings from Punk Noir this, this year at home, you know, so at a certain point, <laughs> I need to find somewhere else for those to go before I do any more big ones, you know, so um, the smaller ones, I can, I can get more ideas out more quickly too, so. Mm -hmm. So I'll stick to the smaller for now. Yeah, foot by six foot is basically the size of like a whole New York City apartment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, are there any any last words you would like to share with the folks watching, or what they can um, what they can look forward to next? Are you have any more life and art episodes coming up? Yeah. But yes, I, I will. I can't say um, exactly when <laughs> when they'll be. Up, but um, I I will be um, ha I will be having new episodes on my um, web series, which is uh, Life and Art. With, yeah, with Don Okoro on YouTube. Um, but I'll be I'll be sure to post it on on my um, Instagram whenever I have new episodes up. So hopefully that will be in the next few weeks. Awesome! And even um, those of you who are watching, all of the videos Don has up on the web series Life and Art with Don Okoro are. Fabulous to watch and available. You're on season two now. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on season two, and I need to finish up season two. So I'm gonna come back and finish up um, season two. Just a lot has happened because I, I do get I get video with you know everything that I do for with 
regarding my art. And so it's just like, it's just a matter of deciding, that, okay, like, how do I want to, how do I want to frame all this? And then now with um, COVID, like so much has changed in the world. It's like, you know, how do I show this in, 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 con in the right context? So yeah, but I'm going to figure all that out. <laughs> yeah. And for, after this, I would love to talk with you off the record about some ideas I have around that, especially incorporating VR um, mm -hmm. for, you know, for all these amazing people that people aren't getting to see right now in this way. I mean, there's not like seeing an art person, like your piece at Fruits of Nigel like, drew me in. Um, oh, and, uh, and so it was really a pleasure to meet you and to connect with you. This is, I think, the first time we've gotten to see each other since then. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I, I feel, it. I don't know why I feel like I've, I feel like I've seen you more, but I think it's from, just from seeing just your posts on social media. Yeah. <laughs> But no, same, um, you know, you've been supportive and, and I obviously really, really support your work and I'm really happy you continue to create and I look forward to getting to see again in person and getting to share another cookie one day. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, thanks for having me on this, on this show. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we're gonna be having um, a performing artist next. I think you'll, I, I really think about how to pair energies that I think complement one another. So let me know what you think afterwards. So I think you enjoy her. All right. Well, thank you. Nice chatting with you. All right. Say bye to Dawn, everybody. Bye. Bye, Dawn. Well.